Yeah. Don't need to worry about it too much. As long as the audio is there, that's the... Are we starting? Yeah, we're just starting. <laughs> we're starting. We're starting. Yeah. All right. I don't do that. I don't do that normal, uh, hey, what's up? Welcome to the Trevor Simonian no, show. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, it's like way better. We it's... know each other. We know each other from Producers Club. We don't need to do a little fake intro. Like we know. No. No. No, please. We don't want to ruin it. Yeah, the magic that we're brewing up here. <laughs> yeah. that we have been for weeks on end. This is this is a special moment, guys. Yeah, it really is. Like, what do you what what uh what have you been up to lately? Um, well, I've been uh, I did a show last night at uh, in Midtown, and uh, I was at Producers Club before that. Um, and. Uh, yeah, now I'm getting ready. I'm doing this show next week, but it's like an improv show. Uh, it's called SNL The Lost Episode 1994. It's going to be at the pit loft. At a, I'm plugging this. Yeah, no, please do. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, room 52. Me and Trevor are going to be on that show on uh, May 23rd. At 8 p.m., guys, room 52 in Manhattan. And uh, I'm a, I think that's 52nd Street. Just Google it. Yeah, Google it, guys. Google it. Um, uh, and what else? Oh, follow me at Joe on Edge. Not on TikTok, though. They banned me. Yeah. Like, I'm horrible at plugging stuff. Like, I can't. Yeah. No, just, I want yeah. this. I want, I but, like, I, I, anyway. Make a long story short, I'm playing Alec Baldwin. <laughs> it's a 1994 lost episode of SNL. I like that as a concept. So is it like it's following like the structure of like a sketch comedy, but it's it's is it a, so it's parody. It's a parody of SNL, which yeah. does parody a lot of stuff. Yeah. So what does that what does that look like? And our good compadre uh, Shane Lawler, he's going to be Norm Macdonald. I did see yeah. something on someone's story and it might have been Shane's or something about yeah. it. he play I think I saw a flyer for that yeah so how, how did you get into that at, at the pit uh Ross Belsky he's a fellow comic and uh he's been you know he we've known each other for a while and he he uh came to me with a few things and then one day he came up with he this is a series of different sketch shows that he's doing they're they're usually musical sketch comedy musical and improv but I'm not sure yet if we got music in this one. This all came together like rather very quickly. So, uh, yeah, Ross, uh, he started one of the ones that I was on. The first one I was on was uh, Soprano Snakes on a Plane the, on Ice, the musical improv. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where did this take place? Was it actually on ice or was that just the title? No, the on ice, meaning I think it's a double entendre or whatever, like dead or like meaning, you know. Okay. He's on ice. Just say it's pretty impressive. You got, but it, he has a theme with that. I think this is gonna have on ice too. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know how Ross's head works, but he's pretty crazy with his ideas and it, just different things that he likes to do that made me interested. And I played the captain of the plane, Samuel L. Jackson, but I never saw a Samuel L. Jackson movie. That was my character, kind of like. Just crazy. So it might have been. It might have been almost better that you weren't exactly trying to emulate someone you've seen in a bunch of movies. You didn't know all too well his filmography. That like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't like I. You know what I did? I played it like Launchpad McQuack from Ducktales. <laughs> like I really looked like I kind of like did, had this crazy the the hat that he had and stuff and and that's how I played that character. I don't know what I'm gonna do with Alec Baldwin yet, but you know I just got this this gig uh like a few days ago so it's very quick it's gonna be like a midnight show at the pit so guys if you're in the area or around and you want to come see it midnight may 11th technically may it'll be may 12th but you know the saturday night saturday night next saturday i think i plugged that enough i think it was the perfect i think it was the necessary amount honestly for this yeah I want that. I want it to be the platform where they say, where's the next pit show? And they don't yeah. even go on the pit website. They yeah. go on the Trevor Simonian show to find out what the hell is going on in every comic schedule in New York City. You live in Jersey the whole time that you've, you've been like also working in the city? Yeah. Are you from, where, where are you from originally? From, well, technically I was born in Hoboken. 
at a hosp at a St. Mary's Hospital, which is like I don't know how that hospital is today, but it was it just, like it just I guess blew was, up. After I, I'm here born. right now, so <laughs> so they got they got the job done. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. the kids born but on the day after. A, you. I grew I grew up in uh, in uh, in Northern Jersey, uh, Hasbro Heights, and um, and uh, moved around a little after that, but mostly in New Jersey. Yeah. What is the? Do you think people have a like? People have a perception of Jersey, and they haven't. Re- that I feel like a lot of people who haven't even been there just were like, "Oh, Jersey." They they live in New York and stuff like that. I don't get why people. What do you? What is your view of Jersey? Because I think it's. I, think I mean, it's, I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I mean, like I'm, like. I just I don't really care that people like crap on it, like because I it's like it's like it's like. If people think it's really good, they're gonna show up. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great, nice and parts like, of Jersey. And people are moving there now still. So like the best that it you know you want to you know some sometimes you want to keep a good thing a secret. So you know it doesn't become like you know, overcrowded and crazy. So, so you went you went to high school in in, in Jersey. Yeah. What was yeah. your high What was your high school like? It was like ninety people in our graduating class. Oh wow! It's a yeah. small private school. No, it's, it's it was a public, public school, school. Ninety people, ninety something. I think wow, was our graduating class? class. Yeah. Wow, I thought mine was mad small. It was yeah. one hundred and seventy-five or something like around there. Oh wow! Yeah, it felt yeah, small. Not, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's, yeah, I, I, ours was. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, I, I I never heard about that too much. Like people with like small classes and yeah. What, what was your but, school like? God, you're making me try to remember this crap. I can't. I like to know Ugh. about the guests, like school growing up. Not necessarily. I don't give a shit about the grades or whatever. I'm just like I like to know about because I oftentimes think about the classmates that I had uh-huh. and how like hilarious they were or just how like good some people great some people were and then I kind of like lost touch with them. But just. The fact that I remember certain things about like those years in school, I'm like, some people sacrificed yeah. our time and class and attention to make us laugh. And I'm like, I appreciate a lot of those people now. Like there are people I laugh about with my friends. I'm like, thank God we had so-and-so in that class to just shoot the shit with. Or just some crazy like thing that happened that was just so goofy. Like, I don't know why. Sometimes these high school things pop up or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like, was your school like calm and like, tranquil or was it like there was shit going down or like was there like beef or was it like just like a a good high school experience kind of thing it was it was an oak it was like you know medium i would say medium i feel like this is a therapy session <laughs> that is like i'm ex- actually in my phd program you're making me like go back into i'm doing my a childhood dissertation now. right now on yeah. joe on edge that's yeah. actually my th- that's in my thesis yeah. That's my thesis. This may be the reason why I'm on the subway like every day, uh, yelling crazy stuff. But I also, yeah, I, I do like videos. What is the inspiration behind the subway and like this? You like do some annou- news announcements, or is it just kind of like for content? They're funny. Like it, de- it what, depends. What's, can you give like 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 what's the synopsis of what it is? Just so like, I um, kind of better understand. Like, there's no real. It's just me on the train, kind of improvising in the moment a little bit but having a rough idea and then using that and i go the news route because i feel like there's so much to talk about right now and and like getting a different perspective on uh like i don't know like um on something that really you don't hear much jokes about or like or you don't even hear like like there's so much comedy in the news <laughs> like ripe comedy yeah that's, that's like dark and horrible too at the same time but you got to kind of make comedy out of it because it's so bad you <laughs> i know? was just thinking about this the other day i was watching something just some random story from something that happened in san diego yeah and i was like if i was this guy on tv I would probably, even though this is some some like dark shit, I probably would have been bursting out laughing, trying to like tell this story to a live yeah. news audience. I'm like, there's no way I could sit there and speak be, like monotone and be like, 
so and so did. It was like the most ridiculously stupid thing that someone did that got them like hurt and a bunch of other people. And yeah. I was like, they're reporting on it as if it was like a, a book report, like something so stale. But yeah, like making making light of some dumb shit someone else did. Like I, I, I yeah, I, yeah. Like, what are the things in the news that like stand out to you? Is it just anything that's kind of going on in the world, or is there like specific? Just things that you like know, you like to poke fun at. Cause you know what it is too. Like actually, you just made me think because I was the on the video that I was like working on today. Um, like reporters and media people to me are like worse than politicians right now in this point in whatever time we're in right now. You know, like I just I think they're like. The new corrupt cops or something. <laughs> yeah, I, because there's you could literally say something totally wrong about somebody, and then if it's wrong, all right, we'll do a retraction thing. But then the retraction, nobody's gonna read that. Yeah, it was already <laughs> out there on a huge platform. That's the first impression of the story or thing that people are gonna believe. That's what they're gonna the first. The thing they see here first about something, they're, it's probably going to be pretty difficult for them to be like, oh, wait, let me tune in again for this next episode and see them retract their statement that they made. Yeah. What's something that, like, is there anything in particular recently that's, that's, that's stood out that maybe isn't one of, like, the big headlines around the world, maybe even something in New York or something that just, like, stood out to you that you didn't see people, like, pointing out something about it that was so obvious or just... Is there anything in particular? Like, probably, um, well, how the news is like, nah, there's, there's no, <laughs> you know, the, there's, the crime is not, you know, is, there's no crime or this is, crime's going down or whatever. And then you literally on a train and you're stuck <laughs> because somebody got, the MTA guy got stabbed in the neck oh, or wait, something. You some know? shit happened today. I didn't see it. I was going, I was taking the, I believe it was the A train. I was taking the A train from 2nd Ave yeah. to, um, I don't know, it was like some 34th and 8th or something like that, somewhere over there. And um, we were at a stop. I think it might have been West 4th or something along the West 4th to West 23rd, somewhere in there. And they were like opening the doors and I was just staying on there because it wasn't my stop. And then I saw people looking over the other track and they were like looking under and saying that there was like a dead person under there. And I was like, holy shit, like this is so effed up that they're that like someone, it, they were they were like, people were like, is someone, pa I don't know how they couldn't tell it was a part. It sounded like there was a person. I couldn't really hear it, but there were several people who were like looking over and under and they're like, holy shit, someone's down there. Like someone was like, dead or like passed out on the tracks or something this is earlier definitely don't want to be living in new york right now because i'm here i'm close by enough to where i don't but um like it's just a good tr it's just a good change of th of like being able to calm down and meditate a little or like just clear your head a little yeah in a, in do, a, at do practice any meditation actually or is that like a part of the no is that something you've ever considered i listen to this sleep hypnosis stuff on my phone to put me to sleep like you're gonna wake up and you're gonna earn a million dollars i like the little <laughs> manifestation a little ingraining the subconscious mind type of type of audio yeah i'm not i'm not doing it to like make money guys out there yeah i'm not doing it to like uh, but it helps. It helps. I'm just it doing helps. it because I like to pretend like I'm making money when I go to sleep and or manifest, and that's like a whole another scam. I'm, I feel like we're going into now about self help and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm about to pitch my <laughs> self help podcast the next. Yeah, for sure. I have one of those. It's a side one. It's the next. It's the other episode. It is. No, I don't have a self help oh, podcast, shit, dude. No. I'm so gullible right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm like believing you. No, some of them are good, but then most of them that's like a whole nother weird cult of a mafia. The the self-help motivational crowd, they're all like 
they're all like the doctors. We're not going to rat anybody out, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's like every, every once in a while they'll be like, oh, so-and-so is exposed for all this effed up shit that they did. And they were handing out advice to people like they were gurus. Like there's that dude, I don't even know anything about what's going down, but there's like that Jay Shetty yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I he's like the him. guy who's like, yeah, I was a monk. And then like he's like in L.A. driving around these nice cars. And they're like, wait, actually, we did some some uh, research and uh, it turns out he wasn't a monk. He just he just said that he was a monk and everyone was like, yeah, he, he is. He knows everything. Like how bullshit is that? that someone would, like can completely fabricate their like but you credits. Know what? You know and like, it's like that in everything. But like, yeah, how crazy is that? People were like legitimately looking to this guy to turn around their life. But they still are. That's the crazy yeah, thing. It's not like it's like just something that was tweeted out that not everyone who follows and is indoctrinated in his like in his whatever teachings is like aware of they don't see yeah. the post they don't see like the, exactly what the news they don't see that someone retracted the statement they're just like yeah. under the their first impression they're of just what like, they learned we're about gonna the go to austin or this place or that place and go go see him and and yeah we're still into him like like he's like a i don't know like he's totally it totally does not affect yeah his total the, scam is not gonna <laughs> change how i take life advice from the guy i'll look past the scam it's not even like I, I think oh shoot it's all that's it i fucked everything up yeah it's ruined. Uh, yeah, everything is ruined like, it's not even that it's like you know what it is you just gotta watch like my brain now i just watch it and i'm laughing like i maybe i should or shouldn't i don't know but i'm always laughing at like like the you know these things now because they're so basic and simple like the the the, the things these guys dish out yeah like they're saying all like these mo the motivational speakers and podcasts are kind of saying like the same thing that is kind of just been around forever it's like you gotta be disciplined you gotta focus on yourself you gotta like they're like things that are are like just kind of obvious but like i guess they help some people who are like completely unaware that there's a better mindset out there but like they're not there just by listening to them is not going to change your life. It's you, not going to make you better. You could get you. I mean, people and then people are like, oh, you read self-help. That's weird. But like you could get self-help from anything. You get self-help from a comic book. Yeah. You know, but as long as you're not. You don't make something your one religion, at least with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't occupy your every, yeah, like, every thought. It's got to be that book and, and what that person says. Because I think that's that's like the problem. Everybody's a guru like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, this, the term guru is thrown around or whatever, so lightly. It's or whatever. Out. It's like, yeah, it's, it's the difference is in comedy. It doesn't really hurt as many people when you say, hey, I'm a comedian. Yeah, but if you say like you're a guru, you might be fucking up some people's lives. If and you're not like up to that, and you're like so what? I sold a bunch of ebooks. Who cares about these people's fucking yeah. like, lives? How it turned out? I try. I that's why I try not to like be like I gotta be this. You know, I'm just a guy going out there trying to live. Uh, yeah. So you think you? I'm looking that way because I want to look more like, you know, like I'm, I'm, like really saying something poignant when i look in that direction that's why i'm doing that it is gonna be great <laughs> i have the don't worry i got you. guys you the could buy my book after this <laughs> it's called joe on edge uh yeah i know stuff and keep reading my book until i make the next one and then buy that book and then buy that book after that just keep buying my stuff yeah, yeah but like i guess what i'm saying is com comedy it's not as it's not as bad i mean there is like ways to you know do a hustle or something but like yeah you know you're just getting up and getting up there and you know you make them laugh and if you don't you're the you're, proof is in the pudding you'll yeah. you'll have an audience somehow even if like now it's like oh there's that comic or this guy that does that or that she does that or he and them or whoever they five fifty million whatever pronouns of whoever like whatever you know you, everybody ha everybody has their audience and your audience has to meet you at the right time. All those things meet. Yeah. So Can you tell I had gummies? You had some gummies? <laughs> I like, what kind? I like gummies too. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> you, are they like from a legit dispensary or are they just your bodega gummies? 
What's the difference? I don't think there necessarily is. They come in an, in a professional package. That's all that matters to me. I don't care. Yeah, it yeah. It looks like it was packaged by someone yeah. with care. I'll take it. Yeah. So is, is wait? Do you, do you smoke or is that no? Just, just no. Every once in a while. No, because like that, uh, that kind of like affects me differently now. Not when I was younger, but like now it affects me when I'm smoking, and the, I just don't like taking in a lot of smoke. I'll smoke cigars every once in a while, but like not like nothing like like I just rather this is my choice if I want to do like uh, my my whatever my in intake of choice if you want to call it that like yeah. like I prefer this because it's 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 a little bit more controlled for me. Like oh, I'll just bite part of one if I don't want the whole thing, you know. Yeah. Have you ever taken shrooms? Um, like a few times. Make good? sure you're in the park, guys. FYI. I don't know how it would shrooms are when you're inside. There's a bunch of people out there going, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> because you're yelling at me right now and I don't even know you. And you're watching this going, you're so full of crap. That guy is so full of crap. And I'm thinking, yeah, you're a narcissist. That's how you know you're a narcissist, people. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just a guy telling stories over here. Maybe there's some funny shit in it. Okay. You, did have doc you know Dr. Judd? Dr. Judd. You ever, you ever met Dr. Judd at a mic? Comedian, doctor, physician. Mm. You might recognize him. He was featured here on the, one of the most recent episodes. Oh, wait. You know Dr. Judd? He's the yes, man. he's the man. Do you have the glasses and and? I feel like if you saw him, you might have seen him at Black Cat. You ever go to those those mics anymore? I mean, you might have. Been, I think we've been there before. That's where I've met him. I, there's also doctors that are showing like that are in comedy. I was intrigued by a doctor. Are you talking about the radiologist who's at Producers Club? That yes, guy? yes, dude. I asked him when I was like, uh, I I found out that he was a doctor. Like one of the first things I asked him, I was like. Do you accept Oscar insurance? Because like that's what I have, and he goes, "I don't know what the hell Oscar insurance is." Oh, I, dude, I think I remember that. <laughs> I was there when he. When you were. You. Were, I had to be at that one. Yeah. We were all. Yeah, we we've been we've been in those rooms a decent amount. I asked him, and I always like to see that. Like, because I remember, I I remember the Oscar insurance actually. 